So first, just a quick agenda about what we are going to be talking, a short introduction about myself. Then I will be explaining what's servo and what's not, which is also important. Then I will go over the different servo main features, the status of the project, how things have been going during this year, and the plans for the future, and just a wrap up at, at the end. So about myself, I'm Manuel Rego. I work at Arigalia in the web platform team. I'm a web engine hacker. So I have been working mostly on Blink and WebKit rendering engines, where I'm a reviewer and owner. And yeah, I, as part of this work, I have been also a member of the CSS working group. And this year, I have been uh, the chair of the Servo Technical Steering Committee. I'm not actually doing development work on Servo, but I'm doing like kind of helping to move things forward and some coordination tasks around the project. And yeah, I work at Igalia. Igalia is an open source consultancy founded in 2001. And actually, today is our anniversary. <laughs> we are 22 years old today. <laughs> Just a coincidence. We are like 140 people from all around the globe, like fully remote. And we have a special structure. We have a flat structure that was like a cooperative. And we are like the top contributors to Chromium and WebKit after Google and Apple, and then uh, in the top contributors to Gecko. And that means that Servo is also something. I mean, we were contributing to Servo in the past, and now we are like taking over the project maintenance. Apart from this, Gigali also contributes to many open source projects. You can see these days talked here, like the kernel, GStreamer, and Mesa drivers, and many, many, many things. So what's Servo? Servo has this long definition. <laughs> it's a web rendering engine written in Rust. It has support for WebGL and WebGPU. It's cross-platform for desktop and mobile, and it uh, can be used for embedded applications. So we are going to go step by step in this definition to understand it better. So what's a, a web rendering engine? Like, in a very brief <laughs> explanation and quick, it's like that thing that takes the HTML, CSS, process that, and paints something on the screen. So the web rendering engine of Chromium is Blink. The web rendering engine in Safari is WebKit. In Firefox is, is Gecko. So Servo is one of Blink, WebKit, Gecko, one of those. A web rendering engine has uh, like a bunch of faces, depending how you, you mention them. But these are relevant because later we, during the talk, we will be talking about some of these parts. So I'm just going to explain it then briefly. But basically, the engine first has this parsing phase where it takes the HTML and parse it and create the, the, the DOM tree. It also has to parse the CSS. And then there is the style phase where it matches the CSS style rules with each of the DOM elements and all that. Then there is a layout phase that, in theory, is very simple because you just need to compute uh, the position and the size of each of the DOM elements. So that's not should be easy, but it's quite tricky at the end. And then painting, when you actually uh, like each of these elements, you kind of uh, prepare them to be painted on the screen, and then you have them on layers. So when you do the last phase, that is like compositing, you composite all the final uh, stem that is sent to the to the GPU and painted on the screen, like the different layers. So you can do a scrolling faster and that kind of thing. So you don't need like to be repainting the whole thing all the time. So yeah, some of these phases we will see like servo. Some parts of servo are already used on Firefox in production. And some of them cover these, these phases, like parsing is shared between Firefox and, and Servo. The style and resolution is also shared. And some parts of painting, and actually the compositing phase, is also shared between Servo and, and Firefox. So the other part is the service written in Rust, which is kind of special, because the rest of the web rendering engines, are the popular ones, they are all open source these days, but they are written in C++. So that's a, a big difference in this case. And uh, Rust, the programming language, has some memory safety features and concurrency features that allows you to create programs with less vulnerabilities. And that could be run faster, ideally, or in theory, and, and be more energy efficient. So it has WebGL support. Probably you all know about WebGL. It's a JavaScript API. It's like, I mean, it has been there for quite a while to render interactive uh, to dimensionals and three-dimensional graphics. And this is, for example, Servo. I mean, this slide show, see it is it's using Servo to be run. So this is like using Reveal.js, and it's 
uh, using Servo, and this is like running live on, on Servo right now, these WebGL examples. And then there is WebGPU, that is kind of like the next <laughs> step after WebGL, that you can uh, do more modern graphics and, and talk directly to the, to the GPU and have more capabilities, and Servo also supports WebGPU. Here is a simple game that is like running on Servo again. This is behind the experimental flag, but still it's, it's already working. So Servo is cross-platform. It works on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And it also has uh, support on mobile. So we just got a prototype running on, on Android. It's not like anything uh, final or <laughs> really yet, but I mean, it at least can run. And also the, in the right picture, there is a like, Spyphone Pro. A screenshot by Fabrice, one of the con external contributors to the project that was also, I mean, this is a Linux uh, phone and it's working also there. And then Servo can be used for embedded applications. So, for example, in the Rust ecosystem, there are uh, a few UI frameworks, maybe you know about them, the Oxus or, or Tauri, and they allow you to create applications using web technologies and they need a web view to render them. So they are currently using things like uh, Chromium web view or, or I mean, like Tauri depends on the system and you see different things. But they are looking into using a Rust rendering engine. So we are talking to them and, and looking into, I mean, not, not yet, but for the next quarter and the next year, we are going to, to have some prototypes of Tauri using Servo and that kind of things. And then there are other applications, like for example, Delta Chat is a chat message, message application that is quite focused on security. And they are also quite interested. I mean, this has, they have, some web apps, WebXDC is the, the name of these apps they have that they can run in the chat that are can of small games or polls or that kind of things. And they want to also give a try to maybe use Servo to run, to run those. So it's like self-contained and all that. So this is Delta Chat, yeah. the, this icon, and this is like the icon of this WebXD. XCD or XDC, I'm maybe confusing now, uh, apps that they are like uh, using to run on style the, the Delta Chat. So what's not server right now? This is like I mentioned also important. So it's not a production ready rendering engine. It's an experimental project. It has been experimental for all the time. That has positive things because you can experiment on how to develop new web standards and that kind of things and, and have good results and, and do things quite easily and faster sometimes. But yeah, it's not like ready for production. And it's also not an engine that can browse the general web. And that will be like a very huge thing to happen. I mean, that, that will need a, a huge investment and a lot of work and time because, I mean, like rendering the whole web is like, like a lot of work. But Servo can render a control environment. If you have some components using some HTML and CSS features that work on Servo, you can probably create an application that uses Servo underneath. So going over the uh, main features of the project, yeah, these are like just the names. We will go one, one by one on, on each of them. So let's start. Uh, Servo is embeddable in, in two sense. I mean, like in the two meanings of, of the word or the, what you can think about embedding. So one is that applications can use Servo to render. Web content, we are working on providing a good API for embedders, like a kind of web view library, so others can start using it Servo easily. But also Servo works on embedded devices, these kind of constrained low-power devices, for example, the Raspberry Pi. We are in the Linux Foundation Europe booth in downstairs, and we have there a Raspberry Pi running Servo, and you can play with that and see how, how it performs there and all that. So service an independent project. It started in Mozilla 2000, like more than 10 years ago now. It was being developed there, but in 2020, Mozilla uh, lay off the whole, the whole team. And then the project was donated to Linux Foundation. It was kind of uh, quiet for a couple of years, not a lot of, of movement in the project. But since uh, January, Igalia has started to maintain the project. And, yeah, the project also moved to Linux Foundation Europe, and now, like, I mean, it's not any big corporation is behind the project or anything like that. Linux Foundation Europe is the one behind the project, and there is, like, uh, the technical steering committee that is the one taking all the decisions about how the pro project should move or not. In the committee, there are external contributors, there are people 
like from Eugalia that are also contributing to the project, and there are also some a bunch of people that used to be in Mozilla and were working in the project in the past and are still involved and contributing every now and then. So memory is safe, of course, like you are using Rust. Rust has some features like this borrow checker and ownership system and other. It also has like built-in uh, safe concurrent data structures that helps you to create programs like and eliminate vulnerabilities related to memory like the yeah, use after free and concurrency like data races. So thank you to the language, you, you are creating a, yeah, like safer applications and service one of those uh, using Rust. Service modular, like I was mentioning before, okay, let's start in the first point. Several of the servo modules are quite popular in the Rust ecosystem, like if you need to, to parse an HTML or whatever, you probably are going to use the servo parser for HTML because it's there, it's, I mean, it's a module, you don't need the whole servo and you just use it. And, and many of the, of the servo modules, like if you go to the servo GitHub, there are a lot of repositories and many of them are kind of popular in the servo ecosystem. And also Firefox use some modules like uh, the parser, the CSS parser, the stylo, and web render are like what, two big pieces, the stylo is the style, I mean, like the, the, that styling phase we talked about before, the one in charge of that, which is shared between Servo and, and Firefox, is the same code. And Web Render is like the compositing phase, the last phase, that talks directly to the GPU and tries to do also things in parallel as much as possible. And again, it's, it's shared between both projects. And parallel, since the beginning, Servo has been trying to use parallels as much as possible because uh, nowadays, like, uh, Devices have multiple cores, cores in both like the CPU and the GPU, so the more you can use, the better. And other web engines can, I mean, like the layout phase, for example, is, is just in a single core, so you cannot do, I mean, you cannot take advantage of, of all the cores. So yeah, like Servo tries to use it as much as possible, even when yeah, there were, we will talk more about the layout engine later, and there were some issues with trying to use Parallels as the maximum, but anyway. <laughs> And yeah, like thank you to the Rust programming language. That's easier and and that helps to 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 be able to do these kind of things. So yeah, see if we want to talk about the status of the project now. At the beginning of the year, we defined this roadmap, and we are going to go over all of these things to see what's the status. But I think, I mean, from my side, I think we have been doing a lot of of work and most of them has been like, we have been following it quite close. So project outreach, we have been doing blog posts regularly on the Servo blog. If you are curious about what's going on in the project, you can follow the blog and you will get like monthly updates more or less on the project. We are even planning to try to do even more. There were like weekly updates in the past, Mozilla times. I'm not sure, maybe that's too much, but maybe we can do something else. And then we have been attending different events, including this one, and talking about Servo and making people uh, know that it's alive again, <laughs> that some people thought it was like yeah, a kind of dead project at this point. So yeah, we have plans to be in a, a, a bunch of places, even like next week, uh, someone from the Servo team will be in China and this gossip thing. Okay, the other task we have was about, okay, I skipped one by mistake. So project reactivation is uh, what was on the goals, and this is like the GitHub stats, and you see here clearly the gap that was like mid-2020 when they were out of the project until like almost the yeah, end of last year, whatever, and then we started working. Yes, they're still starting to, to go up because like the first uh, quarter was kind of bringing a lot of things back to life. So it was like a, quite a lot of, of work on, on fixing many things. But anyway, like the number of commits is already three times the, the ones that on the whole last year and we still have the last quarter. Also like committers, like external contributors. I mean, a lot of people are coming back to the project and doing some things. And apart from reactivating the technical part of the project, we are also reactivating the governance part, like Servo has this TCC, the Technical Steering Committee, and they were meeting not very regularly. I mean, like in 2022, I think it was just one meeting, and we are now doing them like monthly basis, more or less. Let's keep it in the summer, uh, summer in North Europe, but anyway. And 
And yeah, we are reactivating also that, that part of the project that was already explained. So on the dependencies upgrade, Lysero has all these modules. Web render is used by Firefox, so Firefox has been doing changes on web render during these two years or, or three years that Servo was not having a lot of update. We have just recently upgraded it to mid 2021 because there are some missing features that got implemented in Servo before keeping upgrading it. A style again is also used by Firefox. Every time Firefox implements a new CSS property, they have to also update the, the style rules and all that. So we are uh, getting the patches from, from Firefox, from Mozilla, uh, back to, to Servo, and we are planning to sync this in the future. I mean, like more kind of automatically, and they are totally fine, Mozilla, with this also. And yeah, we are like half of the upgrade right now. We are landing them in, in batches. And then Spider Monkey, and this slide until today said that has not been upgraded yet. But actually, last night, <laughs> there were, uh, the, the patch landed and it's now upgraded to the last table release from June or whatever. So, I mean, like, it has been just recently upgraded. It was not available. But anyway, that, and this was actually done by the external contributor. So that's, I mean, external contributors are providing quite a lot of, of things also to the project. And then, yeah, one of the uh, topics that we have on the plan for this year was the layout engine selection. This is a bit complex thing, but anyway, like Servo had the original one layout engine, that, that phase we were talking before, the one on the middle, that we now call, are calling legacy layout, if you see like blog posts or anything about Servo. And they were having problems to implement some parts of CSS. They were, I mean, this layout engine was trying to use parallelism as much as possible. And they have like a very strict rules about how faces, how you will transverse the tree and all that to ensure this. But they were having issues like to fully implement floats and, and things like that, that are like kind of basic CSS features, but still, I mean, they had a lot of complexity. So they started a new uh, layout engine in 2020, but then there were the layoffs. So that was like, just after they started to work on that, they were like kind of stopping. This is not as strange. They were restarting this work because this new layout engine is like kind of following, trying to be closer to the specs, following some, some basic things on, on CSS from the beginning. Not, not like the other one that was more a, a special design. Now it's like trying to be as close to the specs as possible. And this is the same trend that is happening in other engines. Probably you don't know, but Blink has has a new layout engine now that is called layout ng and and that was like worked for the last eight or years or so i don't remember but from the google folks to like rewrite the whole thing because the old ones were like getting a lot of problems and the new ones are like more aligned with the specs and easier to add new things and and fix some bugs that have been there for a while WebKit has also a project called layout formatting context that is also rewriting the layout engine <laughs> And Gecko doesn't have anything I know, but I mean, Gecko had Servo in the past trying to do the same. So in a sense, this is not like a, a surprise. As part of this work, we, we have a, a, a report that is on the, on the wiki on GitHub. You can check if you want to know details about this and what. And the proposal on the report was to move with the new engine. It looks like a better design, and that was agreed with the TCC. And we started to work on, on that. So then the next step was like doing progress we selected a, a bunch of, I mean, there is this web platform test uh, repository that has um, a lot of tests, and a million of subtests that all the web engines uh, use and share. And there we selected like six, seven folders, like, okay, we want to focus to do progress on these folders during this year to ensure we have some basic CSS2 support working on Servo. And here is a, a graph that you can see where we are started in April, like around 60% of pass rate there, and we are in 80% now after six months. I mean, the old layout engine, the one called here, Legacy Layout, is in 83, 84, so we are getting close, and we hope by the end of the year we can be surprising it. So some particular things, like floats, for example, we have been uh, doing work on that, on the, I think, for a quarter or so. And we have moved from 20% to almost 80%. And the nice thing here is that, like, floats was a very tricky feature. So we wanted to, 
I mean, like to verify that we are selecting the right engine, we want to do the tricky features. So if we manage to do it, that means we are in the right path. And actually, we are like better than the old engine was ever to support floats, was able to support for floats ever. And there were some bugs that that were open for quite a while in the old engine, trying to be solved in different approaches re related to floats. And those could be fixed with the new approach and the new design. So that's good news. And that means we hopefully can do, yeah, carry on with the new engine in the future. So yeah, just to see a little bit of the progress, acid tests are not like a great tool to compare things. I think WPT is better. If you are curious about servos, you can go to wpt.servo.org and check the GS graphs and also how the pass rate is for the whole CSS and whole WPT test suite. But anyway, these are like very visual. So the acid test one, this is about float. So in January it was very broken. Now it's way better. And the acid test two, this has many other features. So some things have improved, but still we are not there. But anyway, like it's not like the goal is to fix this anytime soon. But I mean, they are some nice way to see some that there has been some progress and all that. So another task we had in the plan was to explore the Android support. As I mentioned, we have been, yeah, like we have, can now build a um, servo for Android 32 bits and 64. And we have an experimental prototype running in Android. Here is on the left on a phone, on the right on an emulator. So, I mean, this is still not complete. This still requires more, more work, but we are in the, in the path. Because yeah, we all want that, I mean, like, if we do, you do an application using Servo, it can work on the desktop, but also we ideally want it also can work on, on mobile. And yeah, the last thing that was for Q4, and we actually haven't done a lot of work here, is like this embeddable web, web engine experiments. We have done some part like getting Servo running on the Raspberry Pi of this Pine Phone Pro phone, but we haven't done a lot of progress on this. We have been discussing for quite a while, this embedding API design. We discussed that in the Web Engine Hackfest in June, and then in some TCC calls. But there, there is more work here coming soon. We have plans to work on the last quarter and, and next year on, on this topic. And there are many other things have been happening, like we have made it easy to contribute to Servo. We have reduced like the build time, reduced the CI times, simplify a lot of the build. So now it's way easier to build than, than it was like yeah, at the beginning of the year. We also have a mini browser now, like when you download and, and run Servo, even if it's just to play with it, you will get a URL bar and a Go button. This is what I'm using here. You can see here, I mean, it's quite small, but anyway, it can work, like if you want to test something. Uh, we have brought WebGPU support back to live because it was like not upgraded for also for quite a while. That was done by external contributor and now it's yeah, it's still living, we are landing more things and fixing more things there. And we have this uh, demo page with some experiments, like you can visit and all of them work with Servo. So you can take a look and see what, what kind of things Servo can do. Okay, and about plans for the future. Yeah, this embedding API we think is very important for the project because we want to start getting some applications to start using Servo. So we need uh, to provide this. The design has been agreed, like I mentioned. We have plans to start working on this in the, yeah, starting like in a couple of weeks. And the goal will be to have some kind of prototype or experimental application using this new API. I'm not, not sure if that will happen this year or early next year, but that's the, the goal. This API ideally could be used in both uh, desktop and, and Android mobile and that kind of things. Yeah, another thing we want to keep doing is, of course, more CSS improvements. I mean, Servo is still lack a lot of features, and the new engine still lacks more features compared to the old one. So we want to keep doing work here, so like complete work with floats, inline layout, where we have been doing also progress. And then some other features like line height, vertical align tables, writing modes. I mean, there are CSS is huge, there are many things that we want to we want to also discuss in the uh, next months with the TCC what, what kind of these things are more prioritary and which areas we should focus the work for next year. Also, when people start to do some applications with Servo, that will let us know what are the main missing pieces where we should focus efforts. Then, yeah, like I mentioned, we have explored with the Android support, but we want to complete it next year. And yeah, we have 
I mean, like this first, first experiment, but we want to have a proper Android support and allowing Android applications to use Servo as, as web view if, if they want at some point. And of course, many other things. I mean, like Servo is a huge project. <laughs> you can do lots of things there. There are a lot of things to do, so any contributor is welcome. I mean, like there are lots of things. We want to carry on doing this uh, maintenance of the project, this outreach, so people know the project, people know that it's alive, things are happening. And yeah, and we want to experiment with Servo in more platforms, more boards, like, yeah, and yeah, many other things. So anyone is welcome to participate in the project and, and the community. So just to, to, wrap, to wrap up this talk, Servo, in my opinion, is looking great. I mean, it has, the renewed activity has been a, a success. We have been doing a lot of progress in many different areas in 2023. I, I mean, like when you see the whole picture of all things that have happened, that's quite, quite nice and quite amazing. The new layout engine seems to be in the right path. So we are happy that we managed to do like the flaws work and also show that it was better than the old one. So that means we are probably in the right path to make it easier to add new features because like it follows the specs closer. You can just, just <laughs> go to the spec and try to implement that directly following what the spec said and the concepts are the same and all that. So that's a bit simpler and it, that will ensure better interoperability also in the future. And then, yeah, service is still experimental. It's a huge project and there are lots of things to do. So it's not like you, you can get it in a couple of months and try to use it for your daily browser or anything like that. Like several main use cases or potential use cases at this point is like these embedded applications that want to use web technology. So if you have like a kiosk mode, digital sign up application, and you need to use WebGL, WebGPU, or maybe some CSS stuff that Servo supports, you can just maybe take Servo and, and give it a try. Maybe you are using Rust for the rest of your thing, so you prefer to use Servo. Maybe Servo is smaller than other engines, and you just is good enough for your use case, and you just go with it. And then this, this Rust uh, UI framework like Tauri and Deoxys are probably looking into use like a Rust uh, web engine instead of, of a C++ one. So yeah, this is like the main use cases we have at this point for, for Servo. And, Hopefully, we'll have some of this happening early, I mean, early next year, some examples so people can see, okay, Servo can be useful for, for this particular thing or this other. And yeah, like I mentioned, everyone is welcome. We want to welcome, I mean, like any contributor, any organization, any company that is interested in the project, feel free to contact us. Servo has been always developing the open on GitHub. Uh, there is a public chat that anyone can join on, on Sulip chat. And yeah, like, I mean, just contact us if you have any question or any comment about the project, and we'll be happy to, to help. And we are looking to yeah, growing a big community again. This project had a big community in the past. It was kind of a stop. We are hoping to, to see this keep growing in the future. And yeah, that's, that's all that I have today. It was like an update on the project, the plans, all that. Of course, if you have any questions, we still have uh, some time for questions, so yeah, let me know. If not, yeah, like I mentioned, we are in the booth downstairs. If you want to go there and play with Servo, ask some questions also, it's fine. I have some stickers also here if you want any about Servo. And that's all. Questions or comments or anything? <laughs> yeah? So what's the goal for this project? Is it trying to be a full feature production browser in the future or just to be piece by piece merged into Firefox? Okay, so the question just for the audience in YouTube is that what's the goal of the of the project if it's like to build a fully featured browser or is just to move pieces into Firefox? So I mean like the goal, short-term goal, is not like uh, building a fully featured browser because that will need a lot of years and a lot of people working on a project. Like, if like the sizes of the teams working on Blink or WebKit or Gecko, they are like huge teams with lots of people. So that's like a very big investment. If that happens, that will be amazing and great. But it's kind of unlikely that happens anytime soon. And about moving pieces into Firefox, some of them are already used by Firefox. 
I don't know if there are other modules that Firefox can consider use or not at some point, but the main uh, piece that is missing to move to Firefox is this layout engine, and that's like, uh, I mean, like the, the thing that is still missing a lot of features, so I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So like the goal so far is like bringing back to life the project and then yeah, like start using it for some small use cases, some small applications, start to see that the project can be useful for some cases. Maybe it can be yeah, like the basis of some of some of these applications, I mean like Tauri or whatever, to create their apps. Like they have some if you use these components that work properly on server, you can create your your applications and, and have like a smaller binary size, whatever, and that's the, like the, the goal for the next years, but yeah, like the future we will see how, how things go and how this grows or not. No more questions? Okay, thank you everyone.